we are going to magically whisk ourselves away to the property here to 2215 Kistler's Ridge Way. It sounds like a romantic place, Kistler. Jacksonville, Florida, 32221. It's got a purchase price of $275,000. It's a three-bedroom, two-bathroom home. It is a new construction. This is a rendering, not a rendering, a picture of like the model that it looks like. And right here, this baby, this is what we're all buying into is this IRR of uh, ROI of 11.83%. And normally this is where I kick it over to GC to see what he likes about this property. But because he's a very prepared individual, he sent me what he likes about this property. So I'm going to read this right here. What GC loves about this property. Investing in below middle income neighborhoods equals risk mitigation. Medium home sales price in Jacksonville right now is 365000 which is way up from recent history. And as prices continue to increase and interest rates going up, that pushes more buyers out of the buying pool and into the renting pool. And this is why investing in this below middle income housing is poised to win for both rent rates and home price and home price growth, right? So if we're looking at this like $275,000 home, we are, you know, almost $100,000 below the median of where Jacksonville is. What else we got? This is new construction, which equals a slightly lower maintenance and vacancy cost, right? You see that reflected here in the Performa. And it's available and ready to lock in with today's interest rates, which as we all know are kind of freaking everybody out these days. So I think I think it's on a I think it's on an upward trajectory. So the ability to like lock in this house, this thing's about to be ready to be occupied. You can close on it soon and it's a beautiful little ditty of a home. I guess I would I would go here now to I'll go to well what, when we got Jen. So so everybody knows Monterey Peninsula, the most beautiful place in the world where Jen lives is uh having a power outage. So that's why she is in uh in a in a unique situation. Jen, the number one thing you look at when you're looking at one of these performas, what are you what are you looking at here? I'm I'm typical. I always look at the price first. Can I afford it? And then the next thing I figure out is uh what's the return on the investment. So this looks beautiful. All the all the JWB houses are so cute. Seriously, mm -hmm. whether they're renovated or they're new, they're adorable. I would move in. <laughs> that's it. That's a great data point. Hervé, you're a you're a seasoned real estate investor. What are you looking at first here, and are you thinking about moving into one of these homes? Well, I know about moving into one of the homes, but definitely would. Let me see if, before I say definitely inquire. But yes, I mean that's. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm liking the percentage. I'm liking the ROI. Of that 11.8, I'm liking a little bit blurry here on. Okay, so one point, or not one point, but 1,700 on the lease on the rent. Yeah, no, you're good. Thank you. So that's good there as well. So yeah, no, I have, I'm, I'm liking this. I kind of like the fact that it's me personally that it's not on septic. It does have HOA dues. I'm not crazy about HOA dues because I know that those can fluctuate and things like that. But I would throw out there. I'm gonna open this up since it's you know, safe, safe space of talking here with my friends here at JWB. Oh, by the way, happy belated birthday to Mr. Dean Curry. Happy belated. One of the things I would recommend that we, that you guys add to this sheet is what neighborhood within Jacksonville is the property located? Because you guys do talk about neighborhoods, whether it's South Side, North Side, I think there's a place in Arlington and so on and so forth. You've been developing in San Marcos as well. I know where I have one of my properties that has been doing very, very well there. So, and the only reason why I say that now is because we talk about five profit centers, appreciation being one of the largest. So the purchase price here is 275. It's up there. It's up there relative to some other JW properties, but it's probably, you know, in line with market and where the other houses are selling for in that particular area. But then I'm always thinking about how much more appreciation can I get over the long term on something like this. And it's probably going to be more if it's in a quote unquote healthier neighborhood of Jacksonville, if you get what I'm saying. And I keep that in mind because of the six homes I currently have with JNB, one of them, and only one of them, it's one of them that I bought four years ago, is in a not very good area. It's still cash flowing and it's still still doing well. The tenants, the residents actually went ahead and renewed their lease for the next mm -hmm. two years. But be when they did, there was not a big rent bump. And it's only because the market where the house is located would not satisfy a big rent bump, unlike my other properties that have gone through a lease renewal and saw a significant rent bump. So that's the only thing that I would add there. I'm not sure the neighborhood of this particular 
property, but if it's in a strong one, I'm all in on this house. That's interesting, man. So one of the, a couple of things that I'd like to point out, right? When I went through my, when I went through my recent acquisition, right? Like I bought into Arlington, right? Like, and I, I was very much into, I think like all of us, right? Like we talk a lot about Arlington and the mural and all the cool stuff that JWB is doing there. And I remember Greg really questioning me on that, right? Like it, it's kind of a mixture of the two things that Jen and, and you said, right? In my head, it went into like, oh, I could live in this house if I wanted to because it's Arlington. And then I also thought, oh, it's Arlington. It's got to have higher than higher than average appreciation because of all this cool stuff that's going in. And Greg kind of took me aside. He goes, you know, like I, it's cool. Like I love that you bought this house. There was a couple of other reasons, he, but he told me that that really shouldn't be part of the equation because when you actually look at the numbers, right? Like we talk about it often. You mentioned rent increase versus appreciation. You kind of mentioned mm -hmm. both of those things, yeah. right? Like yeah. what they have proven is that all of their neighborhoods have the amount higher. It was like 70%. 70%. Like, yeah, like 79% yeah, higher appreciation yeah. Yep. Yeah, than, than the rest of the Jacksonville neighborhoods. And it's all of their neighborhoods that they invest in appreciate higher than the rest of them. And then the other idea was like the fact that, and I don't know, maybe we can pick his brain a little further into it. For sure, the idea that it's like, we don't want to be thinking about, are we moving into this home? We want to be thinking of like, is this a, a, a well performing asset? But the idea of getting a higher rent increase, I wonder, I wonder how that all matches up. Cause I know that at the end of the day, when we do the, the evaluations and you look at the piece <clears throat> of the pie of, you know, your ROI, the appreciations like Pac-Man and then like cash flow and debt pay down and taxes is like Pac-Man's teeth. Right. So it's like, it's, it's like this like giant piece of the pie, but I do wonder if you have the appreciation constant plus more cash flow, how that compares. And then I would also imagine that it has to do with your particular scenario of like how much cash flow you want today versus how long you're holding. You know, the thing is, I, I, I do, I, I hear, I hear Greg's explanation. It makes sense that 73% on average, and that's true. You could, you could probably break that down though. Right. And I don't know what it is by by neighborhood, Arlington, North Side, South Side. I do not know what it is by neighborhood. But for example, I look at the three houses that I bought four years ago. A couple of them have appreciated about 55% since I bought them, right? Even though average cycle 4%, Greg's always talking about, but 55%, right? We know that the market has been very strong. The third one only is appreciated 25. I say only 25. That's really, really good too though, right? So, you know, is this me being a little bit greedy? Yes, but I'm also gotta be a little bit mindful for it because during the same time frame. We all know that our property insurance have gone up significantly. Property taxes has also gone up. Maybe not as much as insurance, but, but, but definitely so. We can't control the property insurance increasing. We can't control the property tax increasing, but we know that we got to pay it. And so what I've seen is the margin on that home that is appreciated the least has, has, you know, has, has squeezed um, some. And, and now that the tenants went ahead and renewed their lease for the next two years, only at a $10 rent bump. I was like, uh oh, you know, and, 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 and I know my property taxes are going up, my insurance is going up, and so on and so forth. So when we talk about now what I was speaking about earlier, C3X, well, get, guess which home I'm accelerating to pay down the most is that home that is appreciated the least so I can get my margin, my spread back up, my cash flow back up on that particular home relative to where I'm generating on the homes that have appreciated even much more considerably, if that makes sense. Yeah, makes a ton of sense, man. Really, really great take, dude. Phenomenal. Bob, we haven't gotten to you yet. What is, uh, what's the number one thing that you look at when, um, when you're looking at these things? Well, I, I think it's probably the same as Hervé. You know, you look at the purchase price, you look at, you know, the IRR, et cetera. I would like to mention one thing Hervé was talking about neighborhoods. And, you know, that, that kind of is a, a bit of a call for data. Like, how do you know which neighborhoods are appreciating or blah, blah, blah. And there may be better sources of information, but one place you can look is N-E-F-A-R. That's Northeast Florida, I think, area realtors or something like that, nefar.com. And it's not too granular, but they will break it out into different neighborhoods. And it'll tell you, for instance, you know, the inventory, the average sale price, blah, blah, blah four different neighborhoods in Jacksonville and some of the surrounding counties. So that's a, that's a source of information. And again, if someone knows a better one, please tell me, but that's, that's one that seems pretty objective and reliable. That's great, man.